Sky Taylor here. In just a minute, folks. Today we're going to show you and give you some tips and tricks how to take incredible pictures of your paintings. Really easy. Well, what do you need to get started? Well, first of all, you're going to need a camera. Okay, just a minute, folks. Let me put my coffee down. I get dangerous with it otherwise. You're going to need a camera. A simple camera. It doesn't have to be a very expensive camera. Now, I bought this at Shopco, which is the equivalent of Walmart or Kmart. And I paid probably a little bit over $100. Now, it's a Samsung camera. Why did I pick Samsung? Well, I found it very easy to operate. I don't know about you, but I don't like to be bogged down reading a lot of manuals. I want something very intuitive and right to the point. And I found this camera extremely easy to operate. And yet the results that you can get from this are totally incredible. So you're going to need a good camera. What do you do when you pick out a camera? You pick out one with highest megapixels. I think this is like something like 14.3 megapixels. Perfect. Good enough. Okay, what else do you need? You need an easel. It doesn't have to be the best easel in the world. This one I bought at Hobby Lobby. I think, I think retail they're like $14 or $15, but you get a 40% off coupon online, and I think I ended up paying something like $8, $8 or something like that for it. It's not the best in the world, but you know what? It does the job. So you're going to need an easel. What else do you need? Well, you're going to need a tripod. Now you don't have to have the world's best tripod because what basically hopefully it's steady enough to hold your camera. That's all you really need. This is a really lightweight piece of well something. I'm not even going to go but you know what it works. It's not the best in the world. I couldn't put my big expensive movie camera on it but for a little camera perfect. It's got a handle on it and what great feature does it have? It has levels on it so you can level it get your your tripod pretty steady and also it has let me show you up close here folks it has a release you put your camera on here and you can easily release the camera so what you could do is you could always keep your camera attached to this okay what's neat about this stuff is that you should always Photograph your artwork outside. Never, ever do it inside the house. Even if it's cold outside, you have to go outside to photograph it. And you photograph it in the shade, never in the sun. But what I do is, because the stuff is so inexpensive, I keep it out in my garage. And I'm easy, easily, uh, I can easily access it, get it out. I don't have to carry it out every time I go outside to photograph. I have it always handy. But there's another thing you're going to need also, and we're going to go into more depth on this later, but you're going to need a white card, or what they call white balance card. Now, what I did was I, let me put this down before I, before I smash my toes. Ow! Okay. Uh, what I did was I found this piece of wood in my basement, piece just laying around. I think my wife chased me around the house once with it. It looks kind of familiar. I might have a few welts to prove it. Uh, it's about maybe five feet tall. Well, you could go a little taller. And it's basically a one by one board. And what I did, I went to the dollar store and I bought a piece of foam board for a buck. And I cut a piece out of it and I nailed it. I nailed it onto the board. And I'm gonna use this as a white balance board. I'm gonna show you how to, how to do that and all the little tricks on that. But what's neat about this stuff is not only the easel, this, and the tripod, we can leave them outside in the garage. You don't bring it in the house, just leave it outside. So when you have to photograph your artwork, all you're bringing out is your camera and your artwork to photograph it. You go in the garage, get it, set it up outside real quick in shade, shoot the picture, be done with it in the house, and upload it to your computer. So that's what's neat about it. Because it's not expensive, it can stay out in the garage. Okay, now we're going to go into more depth on the settings on the camera in order to get those great shots. 
Okay, let's discuss camera settings. Well, the first button you see right here is called the menu button. You'll want to click that to get to the menu because we're going to have to make some adjustments. Now, all of my adjustments are over here on the right side. In order to get over there, I click this little wheel over to the right. Now, the first thing I come up with is photo size. Let's click in the center of the button and it says OK. OK, the uh, different sizes go everywhere from 2 megapixels to 14 megapixels. Now, which one do we want to pick? Always pick the highest megapixels your camera will photograph. The reason being is, let's say you take a picture of a painting you did and you sold that painting. On down the road a year from now, you may decide that you want to take that image and enlarge it. Well, by photographing it in a large megapixel, it's going to come out really well. If you photograph it in a small megapixel, you're going to be very limited on how much you can enlarge it. Remember one thing, if you photograph large, you can always reduce it, but if you photograph small, you can never enlarge it. Because if you do photograph small and try to enlarge it, the megapixels are going to pixelate and your picture is not going to be clear and vivid. And that's the whole purpose here, we want clear, vivid pictures. Okay, next we go down to photo quality. Well, the quality, we have three, uh, three to choose from. One is super fine, which you should set it at. The next would be fine, and the next would be normal. Well, keep it set at the very best, which is super fine. This will produce a very, very clear image. The EV, whatever the heck that is, just keep it set at zero. I told you folks, I'm not an expert on this. I just, I'm going to tell you what works for me, and I don't claim to be an expert. Okay, the ISO, keep it set at 100. 100 is, uh, just seems to be about the right ISO for the camera. You'll want to keep it right there. No fancy tricks, it just works. Okay, the white balance. Well, where are we going to be photographing? We're going to be photographing outside in the shade, so you'll want to pick the cloud setting. Keep it set at the cloud setting. You'll never want to photograph your uh, paintings under a fluorescent light or any other artificial lighting because what that does is it adds uh, different tones and colors to your, to your artwork, and it's a total nightmare to try to make adjustments because remember, if you are photographing your artwork to sell, you want it to look as close to the original as possible with very, very little tweaking. The only tweaking you should ever, ever have to do is a slight notch to the contrast. Just a, You shouldn't have to adjust colors or anything. It should be very, very, very close to the original. And that's the whole purpose of photographing it outside under the clouds on a cloudy day or in the shade because you don't want to introduce um, false colors into your painting. You want to keep it as, as true as possible. And the cloud setting provides a nice, even light. Okay, we have the smart filter. Well, just keep it on normal. You don't want to make any adjustments here. Just keep it on normal. Okay, face detection. Keep the face detection off. You don't need it. Okay. We'll discuss more in detail. Let's just get off this and we'll show you some other stuff. We're going to show you actually now how to photograph the picture with these settings. Okay, I have my camera set up and I'm ready to take a picture. Now, like I said before, you want to photograph always on the outside, you know, on a cloudy day. You don't want to do it inside, but for demonstration purposes, it's a little bit easier because it's like below zero outside and I'm not about to do all these demonstrations outside in zero. But anyways, what you want to do is you want to go up to your camera, you want to take your white balance card on the stick and put it right in front of the camera. Just up against the painting lightly. You push down on the button. See the little green light under my finger? And also, there's a green box in the center of the camera. That means that it adjusted the white balance and it adjusted the focus. 
You are holding the button down, then you follow through and click. You got a great picture. Try it again. Put the white card in the middle, right up against, just barely touch the picture, push part way down, remove it, then finish. There you go. Perfect picture every time. And this is great because if you especially have dark pictures, it's very, very hard to photograph a dark picture. You're going to get incredible likenesses, even with dark pictures. I know I, I, when I first started out, I had a lot of trouble photographing dark pictures until I realized this little white balance trick, and it made all the difference in the world. It's a breeze when you get it to, into the editing. You don't have to make hardly any adjustments. Just a little bit on the contrast, and you're in business. Well, there you have it. Hopefully you've learned a few tips and tricks along the way uh, on how to photograph some great pictures because you know what? I've done this method and I've come up with some incredible pictures. I've blown them up and the detail is just totally awesome. Now, I don't claim to be an expert in photography. I'm just showing you what works for me. You'll trial and error and you'll learn on your own what you like and what you don't like. But I've had some incredible results and this is a good starting point. So please, photographers, don't write me and tell me different things because I, I admit that I'm not an expert on this. But anyways, what you want to do with your camera is the quick release mount, always keep it on the camera. This way you're not going to lose it because there's nothing worse than when you're ready to shoot a picture, you have to go searching for this thing. And it, it, it can drive you crazy. Here's another uh, really interesting point that a photographer friend of mine told me. Did you know saving in JPEG degrades? I didn't know that. Of course, you probably have to open up a lot of times, but actually the image degrades. So if you're saving anything really, really good, you might want to save it in TIFF, T-I-F-F, -F, because that's non-degradable. But JPEG is still a standard, and everybody asks for it, and it probably doesn't degrade that much unless you open stuff a lot. Now, what I do is I upload to a site that I sell on, and I have a picture of a couch with a blank wall and I always superimpose my paintings on that wall. Well, I saved it in JPEG and I noticed that every time I open it up, it, it has degraded over time. It got kind of grainy and fuzzy. And now I know the reason why. So I'm starting to save all my stuff in TIFF. Because you can always convert it to JPEG if somebody needs it, but TIFF is the best, I think. Oh well, anyways. I hope you learned something, and like I said, I'm not an expert, but go out there and do some incredible pictures of your painting, and don't forget, do not varnish your painting first. Always photograph an unvarnished painting in a cloudy setting outside, and when you're outside, make sure that you check the area really careful. You don't want any shadows on the picture. You've got to be very mindful of that. You know, not to have the sun peeking through and have little branches. You want to get it as accurate as possible. So be very mindful of your surroundings. And make sure you're in shade. Well, that's all. Follow those instructions and you're going to create some great pictures. Cheers. The end.